like the guy you mentioned, you know, uh, I mean, when, when you talk about humans' needs, you know, human desires, there's a level of their desires, right? So higher and I'll say more fundamental basic. So this is a kind of, you know, erectile dysfunction, you know, erectile function is a kind of fundamental and basic function. Uh, let's say uh, honor and, you know, uh, kind of, you know, uh, enlightenment, those are higher, I mean, level of the, you know, desires. So have you seen a patient like that or? There was a, there was a patient of mine who, mm. who had it. I took out his prostate. This is back when I used to do that. Do that. And then uh, I put a, pen a penile implant in him. And he was a very, very successful businessman. And he was having a fundraiser for a, a politician, mm. but a high level mm. politician here in the US. And he was, we were at his house and uh, you know, there's secret service around mm. the politician. Mm. And, mm -hmm. and he goes, come here, Paul, I want you to meet. I'm not gonna say who. Mm. And he says, um, you gotta see what Paul did for me. And he took his dick out. Oh. And the Secret Service comes running over. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're gathered around him because they don't want anybody taking pictures of this big money guy with his dick out in front of this big politician. Oh. And I, and this guy had had one of the greatest lines ever because he was pretty old and he says mm. he made, makes love to his wife maybe once or twice a, a month. Mm. But he couldn't close a deal. He couldn't. Put, do it, you know, shake a guy's hand hmm. without the confidence of, oh. of, of, you know, previously when he had no erections. Mm. He says he was back to making deals and, you know, real deals, mm -hmm. you know, stuff that, that uh, made money and did nice things for people. And he was a, he was a real contributor to the, mm. to the um, society. Well, I have to thank you so much. What I have to, I mean, really appreciate one of, one of that is that, Paul, I've become a different person. You remember how I was when I first came here? Mm -hmm. So paranoid. <laughs> quiet, <laughs> quiet, paranoid. Uh, paranoid and unhappy, I'll say. I can name it that way. I had a good residency. I had a good, you know, chips. Well, my, my chips were really nice people and I greet people with wisdom. But uh, I haven't seen any, you know, I haven't done any quality of life treatment. So I was not really make them happy, my patients. But this is something I never expected I, I could get. As my patient become a happier person, they made me happy as well. Going to the work, coming to the office was not a, you know, dread thing. Like you mentioned, you know, I have some friends who mentioned it, put it that way. Yeah. Going to his workplace is a, like going to a, you know, like a butcher house or slaughterhouse for them. They agonize every day. They have to strive themselves every day to go there. Why? Because they're afraid of it. Patients keep saying that they are, you know, in pain and agonize them. But uh, for me, going to the office, sometimes I must admit that there's some patient, you know, who have, you know, post-operative pain or things like that. I feel, you know, difficult as well. But still, most of my patients who are coming over, now it's my fifth year of my practice, I have enough stack of the patients who had uh, over, you know, those periods. They make me so happy. Some patients sent me a sweater. Some patients send me, a, you know, booze, yeah. like a expensive whiskeys. Yeah. I mean, that kind of thing really changed my life. It's a blowing my mind, you know. How can a patient get... My patients are all cash patients. They pay the loads of money to get the surgery. Even so, they say to me, thank you. Thank you so much. You changed my life. You made my wife happy, those things, you know. It's just a, it's a great joy. And what's interesting was my, you know, my, my staffs, they are a happy person as well. Mm -hmm. They don't have to deal with, you know, nasty, those, uh, you know, struggles with, you know, arguments with the patient. They seldom do. So uh, it really affected my life. I should thank you for that because uh, that's what I learned from you. I mean, I didn't expect I will, I will be the same. So you were initially here six or seven years ago. Seven years ago. And so now thousands of implants later and you've done thousands of implants since then. You are a thousand times happier. You learn from all of us, but it was those thousands of implants. I'm just speculating. It's gotten to the point where you like going to your office and you, you like seeing your patients and, you, and you're, maybe one day you'll buy yourself some pointed toe boots. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess you are a hundred times happier than I do. With your just new twins. Around. So, uh, lastly, uh, Paul, as a master of my field, 
I admire what have you done, but Thank I just you. want you to ask you, you know, how could we do better to work for our patients, patients have their life? How could we do better? The, the thing that we really need to do is realize your private practice. I'm private practice. We have databases that blow away mm. academic databases. Mm. We really need to meld our work with our friends in academia mm. more than we do. And this year I have two research fellows and I hope you, you have one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they need to, we need to all learn more from mm. each other because mm. things have gotten so much better. Mm. I mean, I started 20 years ago doing this stuff and what we used to do, you would just be appalled. Mm -hmm. um, and what we do now, I think we can still hone our craft and we need, what we need to do is get the private and the academics and we got to meld our, our databases. Mm -hmm. And I was joking about being cocky, but you know, we need to get everybody uh, less hubris and, and more, 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 con congenial so that mm. we can work together, get those numbers and do better for our patients. Even though we're close, we're, I mean, we're really close <laughs> to that, to only having, you know, two or 3% of patients that mm. are not thrilled. Mm. I agree. I mean, uh, what's interesting is that, you know, those who really uh, have a happier patient, happy patient and a happier, you know, like uh, in my eyes, money really doesn't matter, I mean, bothers you. Right, mm -hmm. money doesn't bother you, and uh, doing more cases, you know, maybe better good thing. But you have enough, I'll say, doing a lot of cases. What I see, you know, it, when that moment comes to your life, they really start thinking about what I can do better for the mankind, not just you know myself or not just people around me. So I guess in terms of that, doing your research, what you mentioned is really important because uh, it will be a you know ground step, you know ground stone for the other guys who will do after us, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, please do some more researches. So <laughs> I, I need to, to have my research fellows learn Korean. That's what I need to do. <laughs> I'm so impressed with your English and, and everybody that works with you. Um, but we, we will, you and I will, we, we have, yeah. and, you know, it, we, we put together data for papers uh, and abstracts. We got to publish more and we, and we have to take our pre private data and, mm -hmm. you know, plug it into the mainstream so, yeah. that, so that we can do more for everybody. Again, it was so nice and, uh, you know, great, I mean, moment of the wisdom with you because uh, I learned a lot of things from you. And even though we are remote, like, uh, like we have a Pacific Ocean between 3, us. 3,000 miles, 5,000 miles away. <laughs> but still, I always think that, you know, I wanted to, my practice become like yours. Because uh, the way you set it up and the way how you, you know, deal with the patient, I want to be that person, you know. You are. No, no, I'm not. You are. Not, not even close. So you are. I just, me, you know. You are, you have gotten there and, and all of us are ri ridiculously proud of you and, um, and you're gonna, you're gonna, I, I told you earlier, you're gonna have a lot of envious people. And there, <laughs> there's a, a saying in Italian that the tallest blade of grass gets chopped first, mm. but that's never gonna happen to you because you're too happy. <laughs> when you're happy, you kill them with kindness and you're gonna have a, you're just gonna have a great career. Thank you so much, Paul. Th it was a great for, moment uh, again. coming by the office today. It's a pleasure having you on. I hope my patience offered something. Okay? <laughs> I love you, brother, very much.